Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll check if the suits from Suit Supply are worth your money or not. Unlike many other online reviews, this one is 100% not sponsored. We used our own money to pay full retail price, and we have zero affiliations with Suit Supply. Here at Gentleman's Gazette, we're always in favor of things that reignites men's interest in classic style. And while the suit in general probably loses a bit of popularity because people don't have to wear it anymore, there's a whole subgroup of men who love to wear suits and want to wear them. There's a whole subset of brands that dove into that trend, and Suit Supply is probably one of the biggest ones. So today we talk a bit about the history, we talk about the ordering process, we visited their store, and of course we'll have an in-depth review of the suits of Suit Supply. The company was started in the year 2000 by the then college student Focke de Jong, who is still the CEO today. The company is also still privately held, and interestingly, they didn't open their first brick and mortar store until 2007. Did I say that they were um, Amsterdam, right? I said in Amsterdam? Was someone in Amsterdam? Amsterdam is beautiful. Among other things, they've gained fame for their highly provocative marketing campaigns, which basically are sex sales. On the flip side, they've also gotten a lot of negative feedback about their sexist portrayal of women in their campaigns. Apart from that, they also had a start smoking campaign, which was all about the smoking jacket. In recent years, Suit Supply has also become a member of the Fairwear Foundation, which it touts as their efforts to be a responsible. It's important to be a good speaker. Which it touts as their responsible and ethical way of doing business. Basically, the FWF works with brands like Suit Supply to basically work on eight labor standards. According to Wikipedia, getting the Fairwear Foundation stamp of approval doesn't guarantee that those standards are actually maintained. It more or less communicates a willingness to implement those into your supply chain. At the same time, in many countries where clothes are manufactured, even those low standards are not always met, and trying to improve them is a good thing. So before we dive into the suit supply garments that we actually tested, what is it exactly that suit supply offers? Apart from suits, they have separates, such as blazers or sports jackets, trousers, vests, knitwear, accessories, overcoats, and a few other things. Though as the name implies, suiting is at the core of their brand. Now that being said, Suit Supply's mantra is don't fit in, find your own perfect fit. Was that correct? Don't fit in, find your own perfect fit? Good. And when you speak well, you get along better with people. The suit range they offer is built on a foundation of a classic suit, but they approach a more modern cut with a shorter jacket, some more Italian or Southern European details, and often bold fabrics. Some also call suit supply garments Euro slim because they're in fact cut very slim, they're short, they have a higher buttoning point and also a higher gorge, and mostly no padding or very little in the shoulders. The target market seems to be younger men who want a really slim fitting suit with a modern silhouette. And while you can get your typical navy and gray suits, they really have a broad range of textured and interestingly colored fabrics. CEO Focke de Jong sometimes says that suit supply is for men who want to eschew the uniform culture of suits, but who still like the look and the feel of a suit. Suit Supply's off-the-rack suits are starting at $400, but there's only a few options. You'll find a lot more with $500 and up, and you can go all the way up to $1,000 for an off-the-rack suit with a floating canvas in the jacket and more premium fabrics. They also offer a euphemistic custom program, which is not custom at all, but more like a limited made-to-order program. It allows for certain selections, such as the lining or the buttons, as well as the silhouette and measurements, such as the chest, the waist, or the length. The Suit Supply Custom Program starts at $600, but most suits are in the range between $650 and $700. You can get those suits online, but if you go to the store, you have a few more options. 
In 2019, Suit Supply offered a made-to-measure program in the US, which allows you to select from over a thousand fabrics. And my hope would be that you can get more adjustments, including maybe having a lower shoulder on the one side than on the other. I would have loved to try out that program, but unfortunately, the closest store where it is available is Chicago and flying there and incurring the cost of plane tickets and travel would have been quite expensive. Frankly, I would be much better off just getting a local made-to-measure suit from a brand here in Minneapolis. Prices for the suit supply MTM suits start at $999, but I'm sure the majority of the fabrics cost a little more than that. So what suit supply suits are we testing here today? Well, after looking at the website, we figured it was better to actually go to the store so we could actually try different things on and make sure we get the fit right so we can provide an honest, realistic review. So we went to their latest local store in Edina, Minnesota. When we were there in 2020, they offered five different styles or fits. The Washington, the Siena, the Napoli, the Lazio, and the Havana. The Washington is an extra slim fit cut with a more structured shoulder that comes only single breasted, either with a peak lapel or a slightly wider notch lapel, as well as ticket pockets. The Lazio is also slim, comes with a lightly padded shoulder and is again only available as a single breasted jacket. The Havana is also slim with a natural unstructured shoulder and it's their most popular style. And probably because of that, it's available in a single breasted as well as double breasted. In fact, it is the only double breasted style they offer. The Siena is a more regular cut jacket, which means there's a bit more room. It's single breasted, but it still has a natural spalla camicia. And to learn more about what this shirt shoulder means for a jacket, please check out this video here. The Napoli jacket is very similar to the Siena, but it's more regular. It's also single breasted, but it has a bit more padding in the shoulder, which is a little more traditional or English and not relaxed casual like the Siena. That being said, regardless of what style you choose, what do we think of suit supply construction and suit details in general? At the lower standard of the rack entry level, starting at $400, you get a half canvas jacket. None of their jackets are fully glued. Full floating canvas jackets, on the other hand, are available starting at $999 and up. To learn about the difference between half canvas and full canvas and why one is better than the other, please check out this video here. When I browsed the Suit Supply website, they also had something called the Yort Collection, and they touted to have a completely unstructured suit without any type of canvas. Now, unfortunately, they didn't have that at the store, but I'd love to see it in person because that's something that's highly unusual in an off-the-rack suit. You can sometimes find it in Italian bespoke garments, but uh, for off-the-rack, this is a first. In the store, I really like that they provided tags that said if something was half canvas or full canvas, so you can compare things on the spot. Online, you can check under features if something is half canvas or full canvas. Overall, I found that the level of workmanship on suit supply suits is very high for an off-the-rack garment. All the seams are straight, everything is thought through, and it's a nicely sewn jacket. Unlike many traditional brands in this price range, suit supply suits don't feel stiff and the fabric are nice brand names and they also feel good. Suit supply suits seem to be made in many places. Just when I was at the store, I saw made in China and made in Myanmar labels. It also appeared to me that certain styles of suit were made in certain countries or at certain factories and they had a limited range of fabrics and options. It's probably because one factory specializes on an unlined suit and the other factory on a lined suit and so forth. The fabrics in the showroom came from BBC, Ceruti, E. Thomas, Ferla, Angelico, but they also have stuff from Huddersfield or Colombo. In terms of the suit supply details, they have this Italian curved chest pocket, which is also called the barchetta. All their buttonholes are machine sewn, but they're of a high quality where the hole is cut first and then sewn so they look neat. A lot of their sleeve heads show some puckering, which is a hallmark of a Southern Italian tailoring tradition. And it's a bit more relaxed and casual in line with the person they want to reach. It's not a stuffy suit. It's more of a casual suit. 
The center buttons they offer are plastic, but if you go with a custom program, they also have horn buttons or metal options, but they're limited overall. In terms of fit, suit supplies are across the board, very slim, even if you get their regular wide jackets. So if you're a slim person or if you like slim fit suits, it's definitely worth a look. The jackets are all short across sizes and they often don't cover your rear. They also have a relatively high buttoning point, which means you typically get a visually longer leg line. In general, the shoulders are all relatively soft with a small amount of padding. While you can get unpadded shoulders, even the padded shoulders don't have much in terms of padding, especially compared to many other suits you can get in the US. Want to see what big shoulder pads look like? Check out our best navy blazer under $500 video here. I noticed that all their sleeves are cut rather trim, which provides you with a nice looking silhouette when you stand. But as soon as I moved, I always felt constricted in the back and in my upper arm, which was not comfortable and it's not something I enjoy in a jacket. I did like that their armholes were smaller than many other brands that you can find in the US off the rack. When we were at the store and until the second half of 2020, if you wanted suit pants, you could only get flat front options that did not offer a single pleated pant as a suit. Just recently, they apparently also started offering pleated pant suit options in their custom program. Now, suit supply suits are not just good for slim, shorter or regular height guys, but also for taller guys. Even off the rack, they offer suits that fit you with very long sleeves and long torsos. Of course, in a typical more modern silhouette, but if you have difficulties finding a suit that fits you without breaking the bank and you're tall, check out their offerings. As you know, Preston and I have a very different physique and we wanted to see what the suit looked like on each of us. First of all, for me, it was great that we went to the store because if I would have ordered my usual size of 44 regular or maybe a 42 regular online, it would have all been way too tight in suit supply. Now, I weigh about 205 to 210 pounds, which is about like 92 to 95 kilograms. And I'm about 184 centimeters tall or six foot one. The size that suit supply that fit me the best was a 46 regular and I've never had a 46 regular jacket in my life. Sadly, they only had the Lazio and the Napoli style in my size available in the store. So no Havana and no double breasted option, even though I would have liked to try that on because I like the silhouette. Now, both the Lazio and Napoli have slightly padded shoulders, but the Lazio was a bit slimmer. Napoli was regular, had larger armholes and was wider in the waist. It looked like the Lazio and the 46 regular fit me better than the Napoli. And for an off the rack jacket, the fit was okay. It wasn't great, it wasn't terrible. Of course, you cannot compare the fit of a ready to wear garment to that of a bespoke suit because humans are all asymmetrical and off the rack garments are symmetrical. Now, sometimes I meet people who say, oh, I bought this suit off the rack and it fits perfectly. If you think like that, chances are that your standards for fit are just too low. As I mentioned before, because of slim sleeves, I could always feel some restrictions when I moved. And as soon as I moved my arm up or shake someone's hand, my collar would gap. The sleeve pitch was off of my arms, which resulted into wrinkles on my sleeve. And of course, my right shoulder is quite a bit lower than my left ones. So you see corresponding wrinkles in the back of the suit and the side of the jacket. Overall, I can see why their Havana is their most popular jacket. It's a lot softer than the Lazio and the Napoli. And I would have liked to try both the single breasted and the double breasted versions, but again, they didn't have it. Maybe I would have hoped that they would have offered that they could send some garments in for trial, but I don't know how their whole stocking process works and it was not offered to me. I really like the curved belly on their double breasted jackets. And one hallmark they have for those is that they move the buttonhole rather close to the outside. In my mind, it doesn't look that great and it mimics the Italian brand Chamat for some reason. I wonder if they got inspired by them. Now, obviously the jacket is just one part of the suit. So now let's look at the trousers or pants. If you're a regular of the Gentleman's Gazette, you know I have a big bum and big thighs. And while my waist is about 36 or 37 inches, my thighs are still pretty big. 
And when I tried on the Suit Supply pants, even a 42 inch waist was super tight in my thighs. And of course, they were all flat front. Initially, I thought, well, they're offering two pleated pants styles, the Brentwood and the Braddon, and I could just choose those. But unfortunately, for suits, that wasn't possible. So I thought, okay, if you don't have any off-the-rack suits with pleated pants, let's try the custom program. But again, I wasn't able to choose a pair of pleated pants in the custom program, which is a very basic request. So even if you pay an upcharge to customize your suit, you can only change a few things here or there within their realm of options, which in my case didn't even include a well-fitting pair of pants, or at least the potential of a well-fitting pair of pants. So I thought, well, maybe if that's not an option, can I just buy a pair of pants that's pleated and a jacket? But again, that seemed impossible. Why? Well, the separate pants are only available in very limited fabric options, which would not have been available for the jackets. So no, Suit Supply was not able to provide me with a suit that I could have actually worn, which just blew my mind. So if you need roomier pants, Suit Supply is definitely not the brand for you. Initially, the sales associate tried to talk me into a flat front pants and touted their fit guarantee. But once we tried things on, we both agreed it wasn't possible for them to make me even a pair of pants. So time to move on with Preston, but I'll have him tell you and share his experience with you. As you can see here, I'm wearing the finished suit that I got from Suit Supply. You'll get a better look at it in a moment, but first I'll walk you through my initial in-store experience. For a bit of context, I'm a little over 5 feet 10 inches tall and weigh about 125 pounds. This translates roughly to 177 centimeters tall and 44 kilograms. Uh, not quite, okay. Where did the fours come from? 56. <laughs> Yes, many people do want to reduce for better appearance and for better health. Converted into metric, this is about 177 centimeters and 56 kilograms. Obviously, I've got a very different build than Raphael does, and we thought it was important for our viewers to see how suit supply could or couldn't fit different physiques. I'm obviously a skinny guy, so unsurprisingly, Suit Supply's thinnest fit option, the Washington, was the one that fit me the best. All of their other models had far too much excess fabric to even be considered. I have roughly a 28-inch waist and typically wear a size 38 regular jacket. This means that I have a 10-inch drop, which is far more dramatic than average for most men. While the suit supply jacket size that would fit me the best was indeed a 38 regular, I couldn't have gone with the accompanying suit pants, as suit supply, like most other retailers, offers only a 6 inch drop. Therefore, I had to go with the custom program as well. The base model Brescia trousers in a 28 regular fit were pretty good on me. They had to be taken in slightly, but they did fit better than the next step down, which would have been a 26 regular. In particular, the 26s would have looked super slim on my legs, even for how thin they are, which wouldn't have been proportional to how the jacket was fitting. The sleeve pitch of the jacket was also not perfect, but I've accepted this in every jacket that I wear because my arms have a bit of a permanent bend at the elbow due to a physical disability I've had since birth. More significant, though, was the fact that there was a sizable amount of collar gap when I moved my arms even slightly. Now, here's a bit more information about the process in general. If you decide to go with the custom program, you can buy a suit both online and in-store. While the options for fabrics, linings, and buttons will be the same no matter whether you order online or in-store, if you do go to a store to order and get fitted, they can make alterations to garments at the factory level, which is nice. This means that once you've tried on a base model in the store, they can start your order with things like alterations to the sleeve length, the pocket position, the buttoning point, and so on from the beginning. 
I generally run quite hot and indeed have a condition called hyperhidrosis marked by excessive perspiration. So when it came time for me to pick a fabric for my suit, we liked an unlined jacket option that we saw. However, as it turned out, that style was only available in what Suit Supply calls the Traveler range, which features fabrics from Cheruti in high twisted yarns that are very wrinkle resistant. There are 13 fabrics available in the Traveler range, but of course it would have been nice if I could even have picked one. However, if I wanted this material in an unlined construction, I would have to have gotten a jacket in the Havana model, which of course wouldn't have worked for me. Going again with the Washington model, I just had to move on and find a different fabric with a lining. As Raphael alluded to earlier, the custom program really isn't quite so custom after all. Only certain fabrics can correspond to certain styles, and when looking at their website in-store, they offer an iPad, but this is somewhat cumbersome to use. It was difficult for us to figure out what was and wasn't possible between styles, and paired with slow load times, it made for an unenjoyable experience. Even so, once I had selected my fabric and my fit style, I had to pick a lining next. They've got a limited selection of solid linings, as well as digitally printed ones featuring patterns like paisleys or micro patterns reminiscent of what you might see on a tie. Overall, we thought that the selection was somewhat limited, with fewer options than you would find at a high-quality custom tailoring shop. I ultimately went with a dark green micro-patterned lining, as I liked how it looked against the navy of the suit. As far as detailing on the trousers is concerned, I chose to go with side adjusters rather than belt loops. Side adjust. It's important to be a good speaker. Side adjuster trousers come with buttons for suspenders in them. If I had gone with belt loops, they could have added buttons for suspenders, but typically you want a pair of trousers to either accommodate a belt or suspenders, and not both. I could also select whether or not I wanted my pants to have a cuff or turn up, and how big that cuff could be. The trousers also naturally come with enough of a fabric reserve that if I were to change my mind about how large or small I wanted a cuff to be, this would be an option as well. Ultimately, I decided to go with the more formal silhouette that the jacket was establishing with its large peaked lapels that I would go with a cleaner look featuring no cuffs. Next, it was time to select buttons, but other than the different styles, the website provided little to no information about the composition and materials of the buttons I could choose for a custom suit. The buttons on the more expensive off-the-rack offerings from Suit Supply are advertised as being made of horn, so we would assume that some of the similar ranges for this program would also be horn. However, many of the buttons we looked at and felt did feel like plastic as well. I also had the option of adding a waistcoat to the suit, but I did have to keep in mind that if I chose one of the single-breasted classic Cape Town or Ferrara models, that the same fabric I chose for my jacket lining would also be used as the back of the waistcoat. This seemed as though it might be a bit loud to me, so while I thought about going for a double-breasted waistcoat, it was cut in an odd way that didn't really suit my build. Ultimately then, my decision was to just skip the waistcoat and make it a two-piece suit. Also, given that I do easily overheat, we thought that skipping this extra layer would also be best for that reason. A further option was to order a second pair of trousers, in case I was concerned about wearing the trousers out more quickly than the jacket. I don't anticipate that I'll be wearing the suit often enough for this to be an issue, though, so I skipped adding a second pair of pants to the order. Next, it was time for me to get measured for my alterations. At first, their list of options looked pretty impressive, until we realized that alterations could only be done to certain line items around the suit that had a different number associated with them, which makes them much more limited. One such numbered item that was a point for tailoring on the jacket was referred to as a collar pleat. 
We were unfamiliar with what this might mean, so we asked our sales associate. He also didn't know, so he thought to ask the in-store tailor. However, she didn't happen to know either. So, in other words, two menswear historians, a sales associate, and a tailor were all stumped by this term, which was strange to say the least. Most of us know enough. The only trouble is, half of what we know ain't so. As to what could be altered, the right and left sleeve can be adjusted individually, and this makes sense because most people do have discrepancies in arm length and shoulder drop. The jacket's waist can be altered, but the shoulder height can't. We would imagine that this might be in the system for their full made-to-measure program, but again, we haven't had that experience thus far. Apart from that, the length, legs, and waist of the trousers can all be adjusted as well. Overall, though, nothing could really be done about that extreme collar gapping when I moved. All told, the suit cost $669, excluding tax. It was delivered to us about a month after we first ordered, at which point I tried it on again to see if any further alterations would be necessary at this point. As it was delivered to us, the suit definitely fit better at this stage than it had initially, which we certainly hoped would be the case. The trousers were more or less perfect at this point, but this again was to be expected, as they were already pretty good and just needed minor alterations in the waist and leg length. While they're certainly a bit shorter, skinnier, and overall more modern than I'm used to in my trousers, we decided that they couldn't be any longer. If they were, the narrowness of the leg opening would probably cause unsightly bunching around my ankles where the leg meets my shoe, which wouldn't be a good look. So this shorter length is where they needed to be. And while the center crease falls a bit differently between my two legs, this is more due to the fact that my knees aren't quite symmetrical, also due to that same physical disability. I decided this was something I wasn't passionate about changing further. So, while the trousers fit well at this stage, the jacket still needed significant work, as you're seeing here. First and foremost, it was still much too large in the midsection with a good deal of excess fabric. The collar gapping was also still quite significant, and the sleeve pitch was still off, though on this second point, this isn't a big deal to me, as I've already stated. And now, rather than being much too short as they originally were in store, the sleeves were actually slightly too long for my liking. So, the jacket needed another round of alterations. While we had to wait several months before returning to the store to do this due to the COVID-19 pandemic, once we actually got the process underway, the sales associate who took over my order from this point forward was very pleasant and easy to work with. Not that the others weren't, of course. We took in the midsection of the jacket even further, zeroed in on the fit of the different sleeve lengths, and made a couple of minor alterations that the sales associate said would help to alleviate the collar gap more, though as Raphael mentioned, this probably wouldn't be totally possible. The turnaround time for this second round of alterations was faster, about a week. So, what you're seeing here, and indeed what I'm wearing now, is the final fit of the suit. I wouldn't call it perfect, but it is better. There is still some excess fabric in the midsection, but because my build is so strongly triangular, this probably wouldn't be able to be alleviated entirely with anything other than a full bespoke garment. This is also likely the case for the sleeve pitch, which is part of the reason I decided not to make it an issue. I'm satisfied with the sleeve length now, and while the collar gapping has been minimized more, it's not gone entirely as you probably expected. So now for the big question. Is a suit from Suit Supply worth it? Speaking personally, I would have to say not at this time. As Raphael mentioned, neither of us would have been even remotely satisfied with a true off-the-rack suit ordered sight unseen online, as neither of us have body types that fit into Suit Supply's idealized mold. 
And while I was able to get a finished suit that I would call good or perhaps even very good overall, I don't think that the almost $700 price tag and the multiple rounds of in-store tailoring are worth it for something that I don't like that much more than my existing off-the-rack suit options that were already in my wardrobe. As mentioned, the sales associates that we worked with were all pleasant and as helpful as they could be, but overall this custom OTR program is somewhat frustrating in its experience because of the limited amount of options and combinations that you truly have available. Also, the vagueness of what's available at different times and around terms like collar pleat added to the confusion and frustration in the overall experience. So would I shop with Suit Supply again? Well, I might stop in every once in a while just to see how their offerings change over time. And given that the suit trousers did fit me pretty well, I might consider getting a few pairs to wear on their own as odd trousers. But because of the type of customer and body type that they cater to, and because of the way I shop for and purchase menswear, I don't think that I'm really their ideal customer, and suit supply isn't going to become a regular destination for me anytime soon. And will I wear this suit that I got? Yes, I think so, because it does fit me relatively well, it is lightweight and comfortable, and it provides me with a versatile navy option. But as I stated, it isn't now automatically my favorite suit, just because I went through this more customized process. So those are my thoughts on whether suit supply is worth it. I'll join you again for the outfit rundown, but let's briefly throw it back to Raphael to get his thoughts on whether suit supply is worth it or not. So in conclusion, what did I think? Well, for their custom program, they have their fit guarantee, and even when something comes from the factory, already adjusted and it still doesn't fit you, they'll alter it in store for free or included. Obviously, I wasn't even able to buy a suit for Preston, I think we could have just returned it and said, hey, we're not entirely happy with the fit and they would have gotten us our money back. But we thought it would have been unethical because we wanted to review the suit and if we had returned it, they could not have sold it to anyone else. We filmed this video and we wanted to get the full experience and we did get that. So it was okay in my mind paying for that. Now you as a customer, you just wanna end up with a well-fitting suit in that case, if that's your main goal, probably you would have returned it in Preston's mind. Considering that a company is called Suit Supply, they focus on suits and their slogan is, don't just fit in, find your own perfect fit. It's a huge disappointment that they couldn't supply me with a suit. And frankly, if I was them, I'd be embarrassed. In general, I think it's nice to have a large network of stores so you can actually see the things in person. Competitive brands in that price range are probably something like Spear and McKay. If you wanna see us review them, please let us know in the comments. Personally, I'd be interested in their made to measure program because I'd like to see if they can accommodate all the asymmetries in my body, what the fabric options are, and if I can truly choose all the details. So what am I wearing in today's video? If I didn't get a suit, well, I thought maybe I'm putting on a navy jacket. Since I couldn't find pants, I went pantsless. Now, if it wasn't for the outfit rundown, this is how I would film every single one of the videos here. Our designers have developed new fashions for casual living. Back for the outfit rundown again, because of course, I am the one who ended up with a suit supply suit. As mentioned before, it's navy in color and in their Washington fit scheme, meaning that it's got relatively wide peaked lapels, but does have flapped pockets as well as a ticket pocket and side vents. The fabric of the suit is from Vitale Barbaris Canonico and it does feel nice to the hand and relatively lightweight. As I mentioned, the lining I chose for the inside of the jacket is in green and features a micro pattern that I liked. 
I chose to get the trousers with side adjusters, as well as potential buttons for suspenders, and no cuffs. They are slimmer than I'm used to, but this again is Suit Supply's style. And in the spirit of that style, I've kept the rest of my outfit relatively simple and clean. The pocket square I'm wearing is in white linen, and it's got a contrasting green edge to harmonize somewhat with the matter silk tie in green from Fort Belvedere. More specifically, the tie is in bottle green matter silk, and it features a Macclesfield Neats pattern in blue and orange. My plain white shirt features standard barrel cuffs and a relatively wide spread collar, so I've got my tie tied in a larger knot today to accommodate it. My socks are also from Fort Belvedere. They're shadow-striped models in navy blue and royal blue to harmonize with the suit, and my shoes are a pair of cap-toed brown Oxfords from Allen Edmonds just to ground the outfit a bit. So, what do you think of the finished suit? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. And of course, you can find both the socks and the tie I'm wearing, as well as a wide array of other menswear accessories in the Fort Belvedere shop here. <laughs> Okay, I think we are done for the day. Bye-bye.